What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers who went off script during matches. Now, this should be very interesting because sometimes wrestlers have to change things on the flies. Sometimes they have to call an audible mid-match, you know, depending on the situation. And it becomes really interesting to see how they pull it off without fans realizing something's not right. If you can pull it off where the fans, the people that's watching at home, people watching in attendance don't realize something's not right, something's potentially been changed, that's when you know you've done a good job. So we're going to check this out. Should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. All of pro wrestling is scripted, but unlike movies and TV shows, wrestlers have only one take to get it right. Yeah. However, sometimes things do not go as planned and wrestlers are forced to go off script. Mm -hmm. He's hot! Other yep. times, a wrestler gets so mad with how they're being used that they purposely go against what they are told to do. Starship pain! He it! He it! Oh, so oh wow, yeah. I remember that. Yep. Yep. He literally just, we've seen his clip. He just got up. He took the pin. He ate the pin and then got right up afterwards. I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, you could tell he was frustrated with that one. Like, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to sell it after you got hit with a, with a move, a, you know, a finishing move. You're supposed to sell it. He didn't sell it at all. He just got right up. Now, this is how the pros handle a bad situation in the ring. In yeah. November 2012, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow fought the WWE Tag Team Champions, Kane and Daniel Bryan. While Cody and Kane were the legal men, the Big Red Machine gave the future American Nightmare a back body drop. Cody ended up landing incorrectly, causing him to suffer a concussion and a separated oh shoulder. God. Kane, Bryan, and Sandow all realized that having Cody continue wrestling would only make the injury worse. However, they couldn't cut the match short either, so they Damn. restructured the match on the fly. Only Damian, Daniel, and Kane got physically involved for the remainder of the match, keeping wow. Cody Rhodes safe while also still hitting their time cues. Unfortunately, things did not go this smoothly when John Moxley fought. Damn, Ray bro. You can tell he was in pain, too. You can tell he was in pain. Dislocating your shoulder, slightly being concussed, potentially, and you just kind of got to sell it. You kind of got to keep, you know, being out there. I mean, they had to call that audible, but, you know, it. once again, Kudos and respect to the wrestlers that go out there and do this for us, man. Because you never know when an injury happened. And then they got to be out there still to finish the match the best way they can. Ray Phoenix in AEW. In September 2023, Ray Phoenix I think I've seen, champion, I think I've seen Moxley. This one. Moxley was supposed to retain his title, but this isn't what happened. Before the bell had yeah. been run, Phoenix hit Moxley with a senton uh -huh. on the outside. Unbeknownst to the referee and medical staff, John Moxley's head oh hit the floor God. and gave him a concussion. Yep. Even though he was injured, the man, formerly known as Dean Ambrose, wrestled for another 12 minutes. However, the two wrestlers decided to have Phoenix win since Moxley would have to vacate the title anyway due to his injury. Mm -hmm. The referee was not aware of the change though and didn't count the pin mm -hmm. leading to an awkward moment One, two, the ref <sighs> he should have counted the pin i remember people were talking about this you count the pin you count it you have to count he i don't know how he didn't know that he wasn't good i don't know why there wasn't communication like hey he's out He's out of it. There's there's no way the ref should not have known he's not 100%. He's out. You either call off the match or if you're going to keep going, which is very dangerous, if you're going to keep going, you need to let it be known, hey, he's out. We got to change the finish. I remember when that happened. He didn't call it. You got to call it. As a referee, I know it's, it's your discretion at that point. You have to call it. He should have one, two, three. He should have called it. He didn't call it, and it looked bad. I remember this, man. I've got the message the second time, and Ray Phoenix ended the night with gold around his waist. As you've seen, wrestlers usually go off script when someone gets hurt. But in this next match, a wrestler uh -huh. went off script simply to make a point. Gail Kim, in a lot of ways, was ahead of her time. She competed during an era in WWE where female wrestlers were looked at more for their appearance than for their actual wrestling ability. Yeah. Despite that, Kim was an extremely talented wrestler. She had been unhappy with her role in WWE for about a year and finally decided she had enough. In August 2011, Gail was one of 
12 women competing in a battle royal match, with the winner facing the Divas champion, Kelly Kelly, at SummerSlam. Within 15 seconds after the battle royal started, Gail Kim rolled under the rope and eliminated herself. While Kim wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to win, she obviously wasn't supposed to break character and remove herself from the yeah, match. Yeah, Gail did that. this due to her frustrations with WWE and simply to make a point. Not surprisingly, this ended up being Gail Kim's last WWE match, and a few weeks later, she was officially let go from the company. Okay. Damn, now that. I, I've never seen that clip before. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Like, I mean, it's just... And I, I'm glad that WWE has progressed so much more with the women's division because that's what it was. It was a whole bunch of battle royals, you know, bathroom break matches. That's what it was. A whole bunch of battle royals, pointless battle royals, bathroom matches anytime they had the ladies on television in you know skimpiest outfits as possible outfits that don't make sense to be wrestling in because they were trying to sell a product to the young male audience you know like, ooh, look at these fine ladies watch this that's really what it was they didn't wwe didn't care about the matches and a lot of those fans didn't care about the matches but now we do and that is good to see that's progress. I'm all for the progress. Now get ready to cry when you hear about what happened in this next clip. In 2002, four WWE tag teams competed in a tables, ladders, and chairs match for the World Tag Team Championship. Two of the participants were Chris Jericho and Bubba Ray Dudley. At one point, Jericho gave Bubba a bulldog Ooh. off the ladder. However, Bubba landed incorrectly and spiked his head on the mat, Jesus. giving what he'd later say was the worst concussion of his career, and you'll soon see why. The injury was so bad that Dudley forgot what he was supposed to do next and even how to do his own moves. Wow. Realizing his opponent needed help, Chris Jericho watched Bubba through the rest of the match, and they pulled it off flawlessly. It's wow. also worth noting that when Kane was climbing the ladder to win the match, Jericho suddenly put his foot on the bottom of the ladder to help keep it steady uh -huh. for the big red machine. However, the saddest part of the story is what happened afterward. Bubba's concussion was so bad that he had forgotten that his mother had died a few months earlier. Uh -huh. While he was being examined, Bubba asked when she was coming to get him. When he was told she had died, Bubba had to relive the grief that his mom wasn't with him anymore. Oh, RKO damn, bro. I never, I never known this. Damn. Damn. I've never known this. Damn, bro. That's tough. I did not even know that was a thing. Um, I, I don't even know what to say to that. That's tough, bro. To get concussed and you forget. That, you know, your mother had already passed it. Ah, oh, that's tough, bro. That's tough. Once again, respect to these wrestlers, bro. Respect to these wrestlers and what they do in this ring. Because I, I can't even imagine being that concussed where you forget stuff like that. That's That's a tough one, bro. Jeez, man most dangerous words in sports entertainment, but they're also pretty dangerous for Randy Orton too. At mm -hmm. the only pay-per-view in 2010, Randy Orton fought his former tag team partner, Edge. After going at it for 11 minutes, Randy began signaling for the RKO. Yep. However, the as infamous he was that, the Viper accidentally dislocated his right shoulder. With yep. only one working arm, Randy and Edge knew they had to abruptly end the match. Orton not so secretly told the referee to count him and Edge out, and a few moments later, this happened. Edge going for the spear! Yeah! And he's the barricade instead and the referee i believe counted both men out usually russ is yep. upset when there was nothing he can do i remember watching this you can tell i was like yeah he can't even move it it's it's there's nothing he can do he kind of got to just they got to call an audible there and you know it it does suck you gotta do a double count out like that you know fans want to see a definitive winner but when someone gets hurt like like that a serious injury like that is it's not much you can do other than okay all right we're, we're gonna have to come up with a different plan on this one man when they have to lose a match however in this next clip the wrestler was supposed to win but went off script and intentionally lost the match david san martino was the son of bruno san martino who had held the wwe championship for 4,000 days throughout the 60s and 70s of course mm. once david made his wwe debut in 1984 he had some massive shoes to fill however david san martino never achieved anywhere near the popularity of his father mm -hmm. partially due to how wwe utilized him david became upset with how the company was treating him so he decided to go off script during a match 
match. In November 1985, David San Martino was put in a match against an enhancement talent named Ron Shaw. David was supposed to dominate the match and get an easy win. However, David didn't hit a single move and instead his opponent got all the offense in. On top of that, after wrestling for only two minutes, Ron Shaw put David in a bear hug and San Martino submitted. This wow. was the second generation wrestler's way of sticking it to WWE wow. and seeing let go from the company. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I really felt bad for Mark Henry. I think I've seen that. I think I've uh, I think we have checked a video about that. <laughs> he said, fuck it, bro. I'm going to just tap out to this fucking J-A-G. Fuck you guys. <laughs> In this next match. In 2015, the Intercontinental Championship oh, was defended I know in an Elimination Chamber match. Wade Barrett and the he's about to talk about here. Dolph Ziggler started the match and everything was going according to plan. Things went completely off script though when Wade Barrett shoved Ziggler into Mark Henry's pod, causing the plexiglass to fall off. Yep. This was not supposed to happen, nope. but it didn't make any sense for Henry to stay inside the pod, so he had to enter the match early. This led to some awkward moments where yeah. Mark Henry just stood around since he wasn't supposed to be in the match yet. The talent were able to improvise and eventually get the match back on track. And ultimately, Mark Henry is eliminated by Sheamus. This next match really yep. shows the... Yeah, man. Now they've they made the uh, that plexiglass a little bit stronger, a little bit more sturdier. But yeah, I remember that. He, he was just kind of standing there. <laughs> like, hey, what do I do? Shout out to Mark Henry, man. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool guy. I don't know what I was trying to say there. The amazing skills that WWE wrestlers possess. The main event of the July 8th, 2002 episode of Raw featured a massive 10-man tag team match. Kevin Nash was making his in-ring return after he got injured several weeks earlier. Eight minutes into the match, Nash got tagged. Almost immediately, he collapsed, yep. leaving Nash carrying his quad. The other wrestlers quickly realized what was happening, and they all swarmed the ring to take the crowd's focus uh -huh. off Nash. Bubba Ray Dudley, who's one of Kevin... And you can see the ref, if we go back, let me... Actually, let me make myself smaller so you can see this. You see the ref throw up the infamous X sign right there. Happening, and they all swarmed the ring yep. to take the crowd's right focus there, off Nash. Sign. Bubba Ray Dudley, who's one of Kevin Nash's opponents, went to the outside to check on his colleague. Shawn Michaels, who was hanging out ringside, then got into the ring and quickly formatted a new finish with the Big Show. All mm -hmm. this happened in the course of about 30 seconds Crazy. on live TV, which just goes to show how talented WWE wrestlers are. At Look how they did that. Look, that's how that's professionalism right there. They saw he went down. All right, let's all rush the ring, cause some chaos, get the distraction off of Kevin Nash, and we, we got to call it on the fly. That's how you do it. You wouldn't even really notice, probably. I'm pretty sure some of some of us didn't notice when it originally happened. Like, what's going on? We knew Kevin Nash was hurt. But you didn't know how ex serious the, you know, the extent of the injury was. And they was able to switch it up fairly quickly, man. Super Bowl 8, Booker T was scheduled to lose a match against the WCW World TV Champion, Rick Martel. About four and a half minutes into the match, however, plans had to change. Booker T launched Martel across the ring, causing Rick's right leg to get caught oh. by the rope. The accident injured Martel's knee, and unfortunately, as part of the match stipulation, the winner had to face Perry Saturn immediately. Rick Martel was in no condition to wrestle a second match, so the script was flipped. Yeah. Booker won the match and the championship. However, this meant that Booker T and Perry Saturn had to wrestle an entire match without a script uh -huh. and no time to talk it over. Despite that, both athletes showed off their talent by calling the entire match on the fly, which Booker T also won. Unfortunately, and that's testament to how talented they are. They called the match on the fly. Like, I right, let's go. We ain't got no script. Let's do it on the fly. And you wouldn't have been able to tell. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Can't, man. That's why Booker T's one of the goats, too. You know, you got to put them in that category. They both did their thing in that ring to sell it. And, like, nothing ever happened. Like, this wasn't supposed to. Like, th it was supposed to happen that way. It's awesome. This next match did not have a happy ending. During the 2019 Mae Young Classic, Rhea Ripley and Tegan Knox fought oh, in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Knox was meant to beat Rhea and go on to compete in the finals of the tournament, yeah. but that sadly didn't happen. Less than a minute after the match oh, started, man. Knox hit Rhea Ripley with a suicide dive on the outside. However, Knox's left knee collided with the steel ramp, causing her to injure it. Instantly, Tegan Knox knew she was in trouble. <laughs> Yeah. The match was briefly stopped, but Knox was given the clear to continue. However, about a minute later, Rhea Ripley hit Tegan Knox with a dropkick, which forced the referee to throw out the infamous axe and call off the match. I can't do it again. She's done. She's done. <laughs>
Now, to hear yeah. what was said to Tegan Knox after she got backstage, watch the video on screen. Tegan Knox has just had a rough run when it comes to injuries and, and her knees and stuff. She's been injured a few times. It it it, it sucks. I, I felt like it definitely those injuries have kind of hampered her momentum drastically. Like drastically. And it's it's very unfortunate, man. Um hopefully hopefully during this run she can, you know, stay healthy and you know, maybe they, you know, get you know, get people more interested in her. Cause I think she's a solid talent for sure. But it's just the injuries have She'll get somewhere, get maybe some storyline, some momentum going, boom, injuries. And I'm just like, damn, man. It, it just, it kind of sucks. So, but yeah, man, this is part of the wrestling business. This is what they sign up for. And it's 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 a tough one. You know, it's not it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, once again, I'm always going to say this, especially videos like this where wrestlers legit get injured and stuff like that. I'm always put respect on their name and their business and what they do this is why these are the videos and clips people need to send to other people when they say it's fake all right tell me here how's that fake and we're not talking about the just the the freak injuries the freak accidents where like kevin nash just happened to just tear his quad we're talking about where people are doing moves and because of the moves that they did now they hurt Send them these clips, y'all. Anybody that you know, if they feel like it's just fake, send them clips like this. Tell me that's fake. So, comment down below. Let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.